Wow, friends, and uh, once again, welcome to the inside with Leo Akon. I'm excited that you've taken the time uh, to watch this episode. Um, it's just been an amazing journey um, going on this podcast uh, with each of you. And, and I've been amazed by the feedback that um, you've all been providing um, on this podcast. And and thank you all for sharing with your, your friends and and and. I mean, the fact that this podcast is is blessing lives and inspiring people is such a gift to me. And and personally, the people that I get to speak to um, inspire me a lot. And anytime I hear such stories or I engage such people, I interview such people, I get personally inspired by those stories. So once again, thank you for being on this journey with me. And I want to encourage you to subscribe to uh, the channel, uh, please do subscribe to the channel. I want to encourage you again to uh, share with your friends and, and I trust that it's going to be a blessing to them. So here we are once again, and uh, today is going to be another very interesting conversation. And I am here with uh, my brother, uh, David Tetekwashi. <laughs> uh, welcome, David. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it is such a delight and an honor to have David. Um, on today's um, episode, I mean, I mean, I have been looking forward to this day um, having David join us in this conversation um, as a Ghanaian. And for those who are Ghanaians and who are watching, um, David is is a very well known face in my generation. Growing up, um, I, I grew up knowing David on um, the television screen, and David was really known um, in my generation growing up, and so. Um, he's a very known face um, among uh, people of my age and his age. Um, he did some great work um, as a child and educated and inspired most of us. Um, and we would always be stuck uh, to that particular uh, television program called By the Fireside. Um, yeah. And I mean, we, we would never miss it. And David was the key character um, in that, you know, educative program. And so it's such a joy to have. Uh, David here to tell us a story and and to hear more from him and and just be inspired and be blessed by him. So, yeah. uh, David, it's, it's such a gift to have you once again. Yeah, of course. Uh, glad to be here. I remember um, first time you reached out to me on Facebook. Uh, so excited to connect with you. Yeah. Um, you know, especially you being in the same state that I, I was from. I'm like, yay! That's that's fun. We haven't we haven't met physically yet. We should do yeah. that. Yeah, uh, but yeah, it was it was really exciting um, that you reached out, and I'm so proud of you, by the way, uh, the work you're doing. Um, and yeah, let's get into it. Awesome, awesome. Um, so, David, would you mind just tell us a bit about yourself? Yeah. Um, so, name, of course, David Tetakwashi. Uh, I am such a blessed husband of um, a most wonderful wife. Barbara Tetakwashi, and the Lord has blessed us with uh, three beautiful girls. Uh, my first daughter uh, is His Praise, uh, she's 10. Second daughter is Shekinah, she's eight. And our third girl is His Worship, and she is three. And so, uh, yeah, that's me and my family. Awesome. I mean, I, I love I love the, the names that you you give to your children, such, such very beautiful names um, and also such a great reminder. I mean, when, when I hear his praise sort of like reminds me about um, how my life needs to bring praise to God, his worship and all that. So, I mean, that's, yeah. such, it's not common. It's not common to see such names. Yeah. You know, um, growing up in the church, um, you know, fortunate to be raised by, you know, godly parents. Yeah. Uh, my mom affectionately called Auntie Mercy. Uh, and my dad, you know, they they raised us, <clears throat> they raised us um, well, right, in the Christian faith. Praise God. And you know, growing up, you you come to understand. I mean, not when we were kids, of course, but you know, as as we matured in the Lord, you come to understand what life is all about, mm -hmm. right? Um, what we as Christians, or even we as humans. Uh, what we're on this earth to do, yeah. right? Uh, which is to glorify God and enjoy Him forever. Uh, yeah. And so, 
you know, when we decided to have kids, um, you know, I talked with my wife and we're like, you know what? Names are so important, right? A name defines who you are. A name kind of like is, is you know, the first page of your identity. Mm. And so if we're going to do life right, and if we're going to help our kids do life right, uh, how about starting with meaningful names wow. that, that will preempt their identity, right? Um, I thought to give them a good head start on this whole thing called life, um, on how to do it well. Yeah. Right? So that's that's how come we have those names. Uh, here. So again, we're, we're, we're created in God's image to bring him praise and glory. Yeah. So that's where the first name came in. Yeah. And then the second name, Shekinah, you know, we're about, or, you know, Christians and the human yeah. humanity, we're supposed to be about the glory of God, yeah. right? Glorify God and enjoy him forever. So that's where the second name came in, as Shekinah glory. And then the third one is, you know, his worship again. So all these names are supposed to uh, help them, the kids. Yeah. And also as a ministry, even to the people they will interact with. Yeah. Right? So if you're going to call them, you won't call them any other name. Uh, like the common names we have, but you'll say his praise. And yeah. we're, we're hoping that will strike a curiosity, right? Yeah. And people ask, well, why is, why is your name his praise? What is that? <laughs> and then she can tell you, oh, it means God's praise. Yeah. So that becomes an avenue even for ministry. Uh, yeah. Same with his worship and Shekinah. So yeah. uh, that's, that's the idea behind the names of the, of the girls. Wow. Th this is really very helpful and insightful about how um, you, you make so much, um, you know, meaning and the way you bring meaning to, to names, it's really significant. And, and, and I think that that's a conversation that we can really, you know, look into about the essence of names, uh, especially for our children. I like the, the point you make uh, about the fact that, I mean, the names alone sort of preempts um, what um, are the potentials that um, are available to them and, and the kind of things that they are likely to, you know, embody growing up. And, and the fact that it also becomes a medium for, um, you know, engaging others um, in terms of embodying the gospel. That's yeah. very unique. And, and and I really love that. And, and I think that that is something that we really need to uh, share with others and, and provide that insight with others because often um, we take it for granted when we are giving names to our children. And so thank you for sharing that um, deeply. Of course. And I think um, part of it too for me and my family is is being very intentional mm. in the things we do yeah. um being very purposeful very intentional um in everything we do we find that that is is extremely helpful um so not just in the names but you know in everything you do we find that if you can if you can bring thought and purposefulness and yeah. intentionality into yeah. it you will reap great benefits, you know, um, uh, along the way, and that's just a general principle that that yeah. we live by. Yeah, that's 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 very insightful. Um, so, like like I shared in my preamble, growing up, we all, you know, um, you have a very known face, very popular um, back home in Ghana um, by the fireside, and you know, you were on our screens every week, and we loved it as as children. You know, we loved it. We admired you. We wanted to be like you. You know, wanted to be on the screens as well, um, and we we look forward to an opportunity of uh, meeting you in person someday, um, either at the National Theatre um, or, or wherever uh, that we thought we could meet you. Now, would you share with us um, what were those experiences like uh, for you growing up? What were those experiences like for you? Because you got exposed. Very early, you became Cotton on Court, a celebrity back home in Ghana. Uh, what were those experiences like for you? Yeah, those were those were fun. Um, those were really, really great times. Um, you know, at the time that I got into film and TV, there weren't many kids um, that were doing that, right? Um, I really honestly can't even think of any other kid that was doing what I was doing at the level, <clears throat> excuse me, that I was doing it at. And so that was that was fun. Looking back, though, uh, it really wasn't anything special for me, mm. right? Now that I look back, I'm like, oh, yeah, that was cool. That was cute, you know? 
um, being in a category of one, if you will. But when I was in there, I was just rolling with it. You know, it was just it was just fun to do it, and and I had I had a lot of fun doing it. Um, I remember, for me, it started in church place. Okay. Right at Open Door Assemblies of God uh, in Mataheko, uh, Ghana, Accra, and we were you know into church plays and stuff like that. So that's that's how it started for me. And then I remember somewhere early in the 1990s, we had um, Miss Grace Omabo, right, Mami Dokno, come to our school, Seven Great Princess Academy, and she wanted to start this thing called By the Fireside. Yeah. And so, um, so we had to audition for it. And yeah. here's, a, here's a fun story for you. So I wasn't part of the first, I think, couple episodes of, of By the Fireside. Wow. And that was because uh when i went for the audition you know i was a kid at the time you know i don't remember what is it, six seven eight years old you're know, playing all over the place so my clothes my school clothes were dirty my school uniform was dirty so the man who was in charge of the audition says uh-uh you're not coming in here with these <laughs> dirty clothes okay and i remember so his name is mr crookshank we love that man um <laughs> it's like you're not coming here and so and so I, I i couldn't join the audition at the time and so that's why i was not a part of you know the first couple of episodes of by the fireside but of course later i made sure my clothes were clean <laughs> and you know we uh we did the audition and i mean i, I went into the other auditions and and i got i got the part and wow. it's, it's it's been great um from there then the next major milestone was king lion's law i don't know if you remember that yeah uh, joris yeah. wetenbeck yeah. It was such yeah. a huge um, musical production at the time. I don't think there's anything, there's been anything like it, you know, in terms of scale um, yeah. since. Wow. It was it was huge, and we were supposed to tour uh, Europe at the time with that with that production. Yeah. So that's where I met all the big players at wow. the time. I mean, wow. it, whatever big names um, were there in music, in film. And in dance, they were a part of that production. And so for me, that's where it really um, took off. Because that's where I met um Bob Smith Jr., if you remember yeah. Diablo Man. Yeah. Um, and he got me, he got me to do my very first film. Yeah. Uh, called The Prince of Doom. <laughs> and so it was it was at that production too that I met uh, the late Dr. Niate, yeah. who was the director of the Ghana Dance Ensemble at the time. Yeah. And he's the one who invited me. To come to Fun World. Wow. Uh, yeah. Uh, also, another fun story for you. I <laughs> I didn't take him up on it, right? Until two years later, when um, I, I was a neighbor to one of the uh, you know big music stars at the time. Yeah. Uh, if you remember him, his name is Yogi Dogi. Oh, Yogi Dogi. Yeah. 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 So uh, we're neighbors, and then so he came to me. He said. Hey, because he was a famous musician at the time, yeah. and I was also famous with By the Fireside. Yeah. So he said, "Man, I want to, I want to go into filmmaking. You, you got to put me on TV, you know, to do film." And so I spoke with uh, one of the producers, and we got him a part in one of the movies that I did. Yeah. Uh, and so that's that's how we struck our relationship. And then he also said, "Hey, you know, I do this thing at the National Theater called, called Fun World. Yeah, you, know, you should." Come. I'm like, you know what? Dr. Niyate invited me to this program two years ago. Maybe I should go. <laughs> so, so that's that's what made me, you know, go and audition at Fun World. And you know, as God would have it, I got the part, and I started presenting wow. uh, both live at the National Theater and on yeah. TV. And I even got to do Kira Fest also yeah. uh, every December, and you know, it was it was it was fun. Yeah. Um, you know, and then from there, you know, everything just blew yeah. Up. Wow, wow. So, so such an amazing story. Uh, I mean, if you look back to all these stories and, and, and experiences that you had, um, what do you see as how God worked through that story or that experience? How, how did you see God work through those experiences to uh, make you who you are now? So I used to say that, you know, everybody has um things that come easy to them right yeah um, and then we all have things that we struggle with yeah 
Um, I remember when I was in college, and that is the story for most college students today. A lot of them don't know what they want to do. Yeah. Right. So they go to college to figure it out. Yeah. Um, and I'm of the few who never had that problem. Right. Um, along that along that same line, you have people that struggle to figure out what to do with their lives. Yeah. You know, what are my gifts? What are my talents? What do yeah. I want to do for a living? And I, I say, you know, that I, I again, I'm one of the few who didn't have to worry about that. Yeah. Why? Well, because I don't ever remember um, saying that, you know, I want to be an actor when I grow up. I just found myself acting. Yeah. Right. <laughs> like, and, and again, this would be common for most people uh, who are in the ch- who are in church, right? You know, young. We all were a part of your know, plays and and you know, the, 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 the kids choir and stuff like that. Uh, but then for me, the next step came, right? Uh, when Miss Grace Omabu, I doctor came into our school. I had nothing to do with that, right? That was all, you know, God doing his thing. Yeah. And I was a part of it. And, and so I, I never had to decide, you know, what I want to do with my life. It's kind of like, I just got into it. Um, <clears throat> And, and, and that's what I did. Um, and so even when I was going to go to college, I didn't have to wonder what I was going to do for, for my major acting. Cause that's, that's what I was doing all, you know, up until that point. Yeah. And so I thought that I was going to have a career in acting again, because that's what I've been doing since I was a kid. <laughs> and that's why again, I majored in acting uh, in college. And I remember in college, I said to myself, you know what? I want to be such a big actor. I want to be so famous that people will have no choice but to listen to what I say. Wow. And that's how I am going to preach Jesus Christ to them. Wow. That was my, if you know, people who know me um, back in my college days, they would tell you, those close to me, that was my vision. That was my dream. Wow. that I'll be such a huge actor in order to preach Christ. Yeah. And so, and I thought this was God's plan, you know? And so, you know, I came over to America um, <laughs> to do my master's in film. Yeah. Um, in, in acting, actually. Uh, but, but things didn't turn out that way, right? Yeah. I didn't get into, into the program that I want to get into. Um, now, fast forward, now I live in Los Angeles, right? Yeah. Um, where Hollywood is. Yeah. And it's, it's interesting to think about, you know, all those years, 20 years ago, I never dreamed for a second that I'll actually be living in Hollywood. Yeah. Right? But here we are. Um, interesting twist, though, is I am not um, in acting as a career. Mm. Right? So wow. what happened? I what? get that question all the time. <laughs> I get that question all the time. Hey, what's what happened to you? Because we all know you in Ghana. You were doing all yeah. these great yeah. things, and and but now you're not. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not. And and here's why. So there comes a point where we all mature, right? And and the things that we thought, well, the way we thought things worked, we we sometimes realize. Uh, that's not exactly you know how they are, mm-hmm. okay. And so for me, when I came here and I started getting into film, you know, I did some things. I you know, I've done a couple of commercials, uh, you know, big national uh, commercials. I've done, you know, Mac- I've played Macbeth for Shakespeare Miami. Wow. Um, I've done, you know, uh, a couple of episodes for I'm Frankie, a wow. Nickelodeon on Nickelodeon channel. So. I've done a few things. Yeah. And what I realized was as an actor, you told other people's stories. Yeah. And that was not what I was signing up for or what I thought I was I was going to be doing when I was dreaming about Hollywood. Yeah. Right? I was thinking that I will tell God stories. That's what I want to do as an actor. But coming to realize that well, no before you become that famous actor, well, you have to be telling other people's stories. Yeah. Until you're successful enough to have the name you think you want to have to start preaching Christ. Yeah. 
And you and I both know the kind of stories they tell in Hollywood these days. Yeah. I do not want to be a part of that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And so, and so as someone would say, reality dawned on me. <laughs> I'm like, ah, uh, no, this is not how it works. <laughs> you know, and so, and the other thing that also happened was my life was drastically transformed by a series of events okay. that led me to who I am today. Okay. Now, let me just summarize it for us because you know we don't have a lot of time here. Maybe later we can go deep, deep yeah. into those stories. Yeah. Um, but those series of events that I went through taught me to reassess my life, mm. to go back to the beginning and figure out why I am here as a person. Yeah. And, you know, a few days ago, my wife and I were talking about that. And it's something that, you know, in our ministry, um, if God permits, we will really, really um, zero in on. It's going to be a, 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 like a key part of our yeah. ministry, yeah. which is getting people, especially Christians, to sit down and reassess their lives. Yeah. What we find is when we were, before we became Christians, we had a life. Yeah. We had experiences. Yeah. We thought about the world in a certain way. Yeah. We had an idea of who God is yeah. and what we think we're supposed to be doing in our lives. Right? Yeah. Then you became a Christian. And all you did was added the Bible to that mess. Mm. We find that that is why the church is not where it needs to be today. Because when we came in, instead of us sitting down and doing a reset, right? Analyzing where we've been. Yeah. Discarding the things that don't align with scripture. Yeah. And then starting afresh on a new footing with a new deep understanding of who we are and what mm. we're supposed to do. We didn't do that. Yeah. We just rolled along into the church and we're still rolling along in the church with all that baggage we came with. Yeah. And that's why we're not where we need to be as a church. Fortunately for me, by the grace of God, I came to that point where I looked back at my life and I, and I, and I realized that I was not doing what I was meant to do. Mm. And what was that? What is it that I am meant to do? I am meant to glorify God and enjoy him forever. Yeah. Praise I was created to please our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Next question is, well, how do you do that? Yeah, how do you do that? Well, there is the example for us in scripture. His name is Jesus Christ. Yeah. He walked the face of the planet, right? And he pleased the Lord, his Savior, I mean, the, his father, Jehovah, perfectly. Yeah. So if I was created to please God, then the best way I can do that is to follow the one who's already done it yeah. to show me how. Right? Yeah. And so for me, it became a point where I'm like, okay, well, if I'm here to please God and Jesus pleased God the most, then the best way I can please God is to be like Jesus. Yeah. And that became what I obsessed after from that day. Wow. All right. And so and that's why, you know, you've been on, on a couple of um, on yeah. a lot of our lives. Yeah. And I appreciate yeah. you uh, uh, so much uh, for that. You're one of our you know, most vibrant community members. And, but but that that is where that started. OK, it was like 180 degree um, about 10 right, from what I thought I was supposed to be doing hmm. to what I think I know, according to scripture. Yeah, what I was supposed to be doing. Yeah. All right. So, so for all my lovely fans out there, I know a lot of people reach out to me, both you know, actors, musicians in Ghana, yeah. currently, and my fans on Facebook, and they're worried. Where are you? We need. And some people say, "We need you back. We need you back." So, so I'm gonna say to all my wonderful fans out there, even though I am not in there now, yeah. I have not abandoned it completely. As a matter okay. of fact. It's going to be one of the tools that we will use for our ministry. Amen. All right. So where previously I thought this is the main thing that I'll be doing, 
right? You're acting and movies and TV for Korea. Now it's just a means. It's one of the tools that I have to preach Christ or yeah. to live my life. And so I'm not out of it. Um, <laughs> Um, I will I will get back in there at some point for sure. Um, and like I said, it's going to be a tool that we'll use, you know, for, for ministry. So you guys, uh, don't worry, uh, we'll be back. Yeah. Kind of like <laughs> Thank you. Thank, thank you, David. And, and, and I wonder um, with, with your experience um, living in Ghana as a Christian and, you know, um, with a career that was very... Um, you know, promising, and you were very known back home in Ghana. You're still very known among my generation, and you know, moving to the state here, living here, and still holding on to your faith and seeking to please Jesus. How has it been for you? Could you describe the daily struggles in living out your faith in this context, um, in this Western context? Um, you, you, I mean, knowing very well that it's it's a very secular context. Um, how do you live out your faith, and how do you please God? How do you seek to please God in this context? Could you share with us some um, disciplines that you engage in that you know helps you on that journey? Well, so um, I think I'll I'll refer you back to you know the point I made um, earlier about having that that reset um, because that became the foundation of any success that I'm having in my Christian walk, yeah. right? Um, and so honestly, that is a key thing, you know, and, and you know how we, you know, when we, when we do our lives and, you know, we're, we do media or even in church, um, you know, the pastor would say, if you don't take anything away at all, right from what i'm preaching <laughs> take this one thing you know that would honestly uh be my one thing um we need to sit for a minute yeah and reconsider how we got here okay all right um and and i tell you what you will find is exactly what i found mm. that your life is not your own yeah and if your life is not your own, well, then whose is it, right? And if you find whose life it is, then he tells you what to do, Yeah. right? Yeah. Until you get to that point, man of God, what will happen is you will try to do a church. Yeah. You will try to be a Christian, yeah. right? You would try to obey the rules, to obey the laws, right? Be righteous. Don't tell lies. Don't do this. Don't do that. Do this. Do that. They'll all be rules for you. And that's why you will struggle. Yeah. That's why I struggled, right? So it honestly is not about the culture. Yeah. I mean, you and I both know, well, we're both, we're both doing a master's program right now. Yeah. Um, you're in Fula. I mean, uh, Moody. And when you dig, dig, dig in, when you dig deep into, into, into um, history, right, of the Bible, you realize that things really aren't that different. Now, many people would make us believe that things are just as, things are so bad these days, and it's never, ever been this bad. Um, I, I disagree. Yeah. Do, do you know what's going on in Corinth at the time? Mm. You know what's going on in Rome at the time? The debauchery? Yeah. yeah. I mean, and those who haven't studied that history, well, they will say that because they don't know what has gone on in the past. Yeah. Yeah. But but if you know, this is no different. Yeah. Right? It honestly is no different. And the people thrived in those debased cultures at that time. Yeah. Paul tells us about it. Yeah. Right? And so... When people cry about the culture, be it, you know, in America or, you know, wherever it is, the culture is the culture. The culture will always be the culture. Yeah. Right? What is different, though, or what should be different, though, is the person in that culture. Yeah. Now, sure, it's in your face. Yeah, sure, it's, it's you know, uh, 
for example, you talk about, you know, not to get, you know, too political here, but certain things that, you know, growing up were frowned upon, right? Like the this, uh, you know, gay issue and lesbian issue. Yeah. Well, now it's, it's like free for all, right? It's even legalized, yeah. right, here in America. And, and this is not to bash, you know, my, um, you know, gay or lesbian friends. We love you. Yeah. Um, as Christians, because Christ loves you, all yeah. right. But but you look at that, and people look at that, and and sometimes the freedoms of the church being eroded, they look at that, and we cry, we cry out, and we say, "Oh, woe is me! I am undone." Well, no, you're not undone. The yeah. culture is doing exactly what the culture does. Yeah, the world is doing what the world does. That should not in any way affect you, the Christian. Well, if anything at all, it should actually make your light shine brighter. Amen. Because the darker the darkness, the brighter the light shines. Yeah. Right? And so let's not worry about what's going on around us. Let's worry about what we are doing, about what we are called to do. That's why I love it when, you know, I'm a big Lakers fan, right? And so when you when these coaches are talking, right, and they say, no, we, we don't worry about what, <laughs> what these guys are doing. We don't worry about the other team. We <laughs> worry about us and what we do. Yeah. That's the only thing that ch the church should do. Yeah. I don't care what culture you live in. Worry yeah. about you and what yeah. you are supposed to do. Yeah. And you're going to be okay. All right. And so, again, for me, it, it really was me sitting down, right, looking back at my life, figuring out what it is I'm supposed to be doing and taking off from there. And I promise you, man of God. Any Christian that will sit for five minutes yeah. to ponder these questions that I went through, yeah. they will come to the same conclusions that I came. Yeah. That our life's not our own. And if that's true, then he tells me what to do. Yeah. And I follow him Amen. all the way. Amen. It makes life so simple, man of God. It makes Christianity so I don't want to say easy, but it makes Christianity so simple. Yeah. All right. I don't know if we're going to talk about that later, yeah. but man of God, my life is not perfect. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Exactly. I mean, and mine yet, as well. I mean, yeah. And yet, the peace that I have now, yeah. I cannot describe. Yeah. I used to worry about many things. Yeah. About finances, about you know whatever. Yeah. Today, or for the last couple of years, all those worries are gone. Mm. Sure, God has brought better things our way and all of that, yeah. but that's not it. Yeah. What it is, is knowing who I am yeah. in him, yeah. living for him, and yeah. understanding that he takes care of me when I take care of him. Amen. 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 I mean, su su such a powerful insight here about, you know, living out the gospel and, and being the light. Um wherever we find ourselves so david has been such a great gift um have a this conversation with you i mean and and friends i, I want to encourage you to share this with your loved ones and friends and and i mean david's story i could describe david's story as as a story of uh twist tens but ultimately a story of hope and and i'm sure that we all have a lot to learn uh, from the story of david and, and the encouragement he gives us about you know, leaving the gospel and, uh, you know, taking the reset. I mean, pausing for a moment to, to reset. And I think that that's really important. And, and for me, I see the reset as, as, as something that needs to be a process and not just a one time off thing that on a daily, uh, on our journey with God, on our journey on earth, we need to from time to time uh, to take a moment and reset and, and hear what God is doing and hear what God is saying to us. So, um, yeah, thank you all for joining. And David, thank you for making the time. Uh, before I let you go, would you mind praying for everyone that is uh, watching? Um, if you have final words to share, you can share and then you can pray over us um, before I let you go. Yes, of course. Um, yeah, last words would be, um, I think, that again, if you do um, this reset that I'm talking about, if you just sit for five minutes and, and you consider where your life has been and where your life is right now and what it is that God wants it to be, what you'll find is that you were created to bring pleasure and glory to Jesus Christ in everything.
thing you do. Amen. And if you understand that and you believe that, and the question is, well, how? Yeah. How do I bring pleasure and glory to Jesus Christ? Yeah. How do I do that in my business? How do I do that with uh, the way I handle my wife yeah. and my children? Yeah. How do I do that with the way I communicate with my friends and family and colleagues at work? Yeah. How do I do that? How do I please Jesus in literally everything I do? Because you will come to understand that's why you've been created and that's why you exist. Amen. And you will explore the opportunities to do that. And the Bible will be your guide. Amen. All right. And so uh, that's what I got to say. Let's pray. Yeah. Holy Father, thank you for um, everyone who is watching. Thank you for this man of God. And, you know, I've always said, you don't do coincidences, right? And so there is a reason you brought this man of God into my life. And I thank you for it. And I pray that your will for this, this relationship um, be established and come to pass in Jesus' name. I pray for everyone watching. Um, I ask, Lord, that you do for them what you did for me. Um, help them to take that time. Help them to consider, look back in their lives and take inventory of where they've been and where they are now. Yes. And reconcile that with where you want them to be right now and what you've called them to do. Yes. Uh, help them have this moment and yes. then take them through what you took me through. Yes. Look into Jesus solely, having you as the only focus yes. in our lives. Yes, Lord. And from there, all things working out together for our good because now we're looking at who we need to look to lord i also know that we all have struggles in our lives yeah whatever those struggles are holy father whether it be spiritual struggles physical needs emotional needs health needs holy father financial needs holy father whatever those needs are that anybody on this video is experiencing i ask holy father that you meet all those needs according to your riches in glory in christ jesus thank you for the prayers again in jesus name amen amen wow we have a lot a lot a lot of process and so david once again thank you for joining uh, me in this conversation and so friends do well to subscribe to the channel and do well to share with um, your friends and loved ones and looking forward to being with you again uh, in the next episode before that stay blessed bye-bye